There's Des Moines over there. It's by the elbow. Hey! This video is late. I'm recording now on September 30th, which is a Tuesday, and it's the very end of the day and the very end of the month. And I probably should have gotten this to you yesterday, but I accidentally recorded this whole long questionnaire answer thing, and I wanted to cut it out, but then I realized the whole thing was kind of too long and rambly and full of the word um and some like, and so I'm redoing it now with different stuff that's shorter. So the thing about Des Moines or towns of that size, I have a hard time thinking of any urban area, um, which sort of assumes a certain amount of density and not spread outness. But anyway, I less than maybe half a million, I tend to not think of it as much of a city. Uh, but at the same time, I like to refer to Chicago sometimes as, as a town, sort of like my kind of town. It's like a term of endearment thing. Anyway, um, big old party schools. I didn't go to one. I don't really know how that works. I presume that there's enough people there that you can uh, find the ones that want to do the things that you want to do or something similar and hang out with those people and spend less time with the people who are doing the whole drunken stumbly getting themselves into bad situations thing. Um, but I'm going to defer to Kyle. I'm going to explicitly call out Kyle and say, Kyle, you need to make a video and talk about this. Let's plays. Some are cool. Some walk you through and show you interesting things or make funny jokes. Some are just more of the screechy variety or... Yeah, don't do the screechy variety. Even if you just do the silent thing so that people can get an idea for what the game is like or use it as a reference if they want to talk about the game, that's great. I don't know if there's problems with intellectual property rules on YouTube for silent Let's Plays, though. So check that if you're going to do that. But don't do screechy thing. Names on the internet. Right, so... On one hand, yeah, you want to have, like, the brand that you are trying to present for, like, your Let's Plays, and you want to have that cohesive and sort of uh, concentrated and powerful so that you don't confuse people or people know what they're getting when they come to whatever your landing page is for, you know, a website or a YouTube profile page or whatever that is. That and this other thing of not being too open and vulnerable, especially about private information on the Internet, and that's a super big problem. Like, I just the other day um, got retweeted by some uh, of these hashtag Gamergate folks, um, not all of which are being awful on the internet, but some of that, some people under that banner have been doing really terrible things, like, you know, taking pictures of people's front doors and sending that to them along with explicit threats, and that's really un not okay. So when I got that retweet, I immediately kind of panted a little bit and changed all of my passwords. And then there's selling plasma. That is traditionally associated as kind of a desperate move, so hopefully you're not feeling desperate. Um, if it seems like the best option for whatever reason, um, be careful. Make sure you understand um, their payment structure because sometimes that can be finicky and keep in mind that you're losing protein so don't you know run out and play frisbee immediately afterward uh, on the other hand congrats on getting back into frisbee it's a great time and I hope you meet a lot of cool people doing that two quick points about very early vlogbrothers videos one the intro music sounds like minecraft two John Green was uh, on a diet back then and was trying to get himself down to the lowest class of heavyweight give against in international boxing standards which would be like 168 to 170 something um, which is where I am I'm actually trying to get down to the next weight class lower which I think is a super middleweight that'd be 160 168 I think that really define the jaw here and help me look good in a way that doesn't involve a beard that would get in the way for makeouts one quick thing about income, because it came up when I was doing the survey, a lot of people have trouble with that because there's this notion that you should be doing that which you're really passionate about uh, for as much of your waking hours as you can. Um, many people somewhere in their 20s realize or admit that you can't make a living wage out of what you're passionate about. Uh, so the trick is figuring out how to... Um, support yourself 
with a job that you can enjoy um, or feel like you have you're giving back in some positive way uh, and then call it done at the end of the day or whenever the, your shift is over and get back to doing what you love and still have energy and time to do that. I don't know if that applies to the plasma and frisbee thing or not. I'll let you decide. So about incorrect copies of things. One, I want to know what was on those tests. Two, um, maybe there's metaphors there about incorrect copies. Um, three, I want to know what all your other classes, what are you reading this week? What are the things that you're supposed to be learning? What are you discussing in discussion sections? Um, and what are the things that sort of hang in your head as you walk back from class that you think might have been neat or stupid or both? Questions for me. Uh, fraternities in college. So there's actually two stories here. The first one is I briefly was part of the 10-week, I think it was 10-week, pledge process for a an, an Asian friend, um, which is sort of fun because on one hand, um, people who are Korean-American don't really spend much time, generally speaking, with people who are um, native Vietnamese, for example, just to pick some other East Asian um, country, or Southeast Asian in that case. The reason I started was because I grew up with a lot of Asian kids in my classes, um, and I was totally comfortable with that. I was into a lot of Asians. So my best friend across the hall in my dorm uh, was uh, a Korean-American guy, and uh, I was friends with him and another Korean American guy who lived in down the hall, um, and we all pledged together, and we all pretty much dropped out together. Uh, a couple of reasons I left were one, the pledge process was supposed to be really hard, but it really wasn't. It was um, more like two in the morning, everybody go out in the snow and do calisthenics together, kind of stuff. Um, which I, I appreciate the bonding of that, but at the same time. Um, it didn't feel like I was getting much out of it or really be even asked to do that much and it just seemed kind of eh. Um, on the other hand, I also were, was hearing rumors that at the end of the process we would all have to drink a keg of beer individually in the course of one night and that just seems like a stupid idea. I just, I don't, I can't understand a world where that makes you grow together as, as brothers or anything else, uh, that is really redeeming about that. So, um, sorry to that group if that wasn't the case. I probably could have just asked. Um, but no. Sometimes stupid things are just stupid things. The second story there is about a group called the Edmund Burke Society, which uh, is a secret society. Um, it's not secret. They meet uh, regularly to debate political issues or um, sort of political, theoretical issues, you wear ties if you're going to speak, um, and you are friends, and that's that's really the long and short of it. There is a sort of initiation process, and that whole stuff does exist, um, but it um, was much more about uh, having real conversations about things, sometimes joking conversations about things, and hanging out in a way that... Uh, called us up towards being um, more intellectual, uh, thoughtful people who listened to each other and responded. Um, it's technically a conservatives group. Uh, generally, it leaned more towards the sort of early 20th century going into 19th century conservatism, where it was much more about, before we do something, let's consider why we would do it and what the ramifications of it would be, which is, I think is vastly different from what we would call conservative today, which is different. So to sum that up, uh, alcohol poisoning is bad and you should avoid that. Uh, drinking in moderation while engaging in conversation with people in a community that calls you upward is pretty okay, and I would endorse that. Um, Though I don't technically endorse you doing anything illegal because you're under 21. Okay, so final assignments. What are you studying? Tell me what you're studying and reading and talking about. I want to know. Um, 
if you're having good conversations outside of class that aren't related to class, I want to know that too. So that's what I want from you. I will also send her along these survey questions. I want both you and Kyle to respond to those. And I want Kyle to talk about going to school in Madison and what that was like socially, uh, finding people to hang out with and finding people not to hang out with and inviting me up and probably being thoroughly embarrassed by my presence. Okay, I hope you're both doing well and I hope to hear back from you both soon.